Good morning, everyone. When I was a little girl, I caught a praying mantis and kept it as a pet one summer. I thought it was the coolest insect. I kept a bug catcher in my bedroom, and my poor older sister, she was afraid of the praying mantis. My state of Massachusetts only has two mantis. They are both non-native. They are the European and the Chinese mantis. The Chinese mantis is native to China and other parts of Asia. The European mantis is native to Europe. It was first introduced to North America, first recorded in Rochester, New York in 1900. They brought the mantis here to help control pest population. It is now found throughout the United States. There are over 2,400 species worldwide. This past autumn while I was on a nature walk in Franklin, Massachusetts at Beaver Pond, I found a Chinese mantis. They are a large and slender praying mantis up to five inches long. They vary in color. They're either all green or brown or a variation of green and brown. Oftentimes there is a green line along the edge of the forewing. Wings extend the full length of the abdomen. The mouth part of a praying mantis is specially adapted for its predatory lifestyle, featuring robust mouth parts that include prominent mandibles. The mandibles are strong, curved and sharp, designed to grasp and slice through the body of their prey to help the praying mantis chew their food. Praying mantis have three pairs of legs. The front pair are for catching prey, giving the appearance like they are praying. They are the only insect in the world that can turn their head 180 degrees, which gives them a wide field of vision. This superpower is very useful for hunting prey. They have a triangular shaped head with two very large compound bulging eyes. In the daylight, the eyes are clear and can match their head color. Low light they look black. They have long slender antenna. The Chinese mantis is the largest mantis in North America. They are non-native, introduced in 1896 to United States. They were accidentally released at a plant nursery in Mount Airy, Pennsylvania. They have spread since their release. Many nurseries still sell Chinese mantis egg cases for people to place in their gardens. Chinese mantis are referred to as being invasive in some parts of the United States. Other areas of the country have the Carolina mantis, which is native. Egg cases are round, tan, and frothy. They harden to protect the young. They are often found on twigs or bushes or small trees. I have also seen them on goldenrod stems. Egg cases contain hundreds of eggs. Eggs hatch in the spring. The tiny nymphs resemble miniature adults. The mantis lay their eggs at the end of the summer and overwinter and hatch in the spring. They don't have a very long lifespan, approximately 6 to 12 months. The one that I found was at the end of its life, and the female is larger than the male. A single female mantis may produce several egg cases after mating just once. I heard the name of the egg cases pronounced many different ways. The main one that I heard pronounced was Othika. So I'm going to put the spelling up above so you can see it. Chinese mantis are not venomous and are generally considered harmless. However, they do have sharp spines on their forelegs and can deliver a painful bite if provoked or threatened. Some people keep them as pets. Mantises are ambush predators. They remain motionless and use their camouflage and surprise their prey. Chinese mantis diet. They eat a variety of insects. Example, crickets, cicadas, lizards, frogs, spiders, and bees. They also eat small birds and other other mantises. The Chinese mantis has been known to eat hummingbirds, which is absolutely devastating to me. They are very fast and can snatch a hummingbird out of the air or at the hummingbird feeders. They use their strong forelegs to hold a hummingbird and bite and eat the hummingbird's innards. If you have a Chinese mantis hanging out at your hummingbird feeders, please take them down for a few weeks or until the mantis has moved on. They will also go after monarch butterflies and caterpillars. Chinese mantis can outcompete native mantis for food. Praying mantises are not protected protected by federal or state law in the United States. The idea that they are endangered and illegal destroy is a myth that began back in the 1950s. Some folks say to destroy the adults due to what they do to the hummingbirds. Now I wish they wouldn't go after the poor hummingbirds. If you want to help manage the population, you can destroy the egg cases before they hatch. Depending on local wildlife regulations, it may be illegal to sell Chinese mantis eggs. Consult your local wildlife or agricultural department for more information. Mantises go through several molts before reaching adult size. Molting is a process of shedding and removing the exoskeleton. Like many mantises, the Chinese mantis sometimes engages in sexual cannibalism, where the female will eat the male after mating. They really are a cool looking insect. If you have any in your area, please let me know down in the comment section. Some praying mantises can fly. The Chinese mantis is mostly flightless, though the male can sometimes fly short distances. The female does not fly. I've only seen a 
few praying mantises fly in my life and unfortunately I was never able to capture it on film. It happened so fast. They don't fly very gracefully. When you see them coming at you, it's like, oh my goodness, what is that? But it's pretty cool to see. Some Christians believe that mantises symbolizes the presence of angels watching over you. The stillness of praying mantises can be a reminder of the Bible verse in Psalms 46. Be still and know that I am God. In many cultures, seeing a praying mantis is considered good luck. Native Americans believe that the mantis came before the creation of man. While doing my research, I found out that the European praying mantis became the state insect of Connecticut in 1977. Connecticut is a state right below Massachusetts. And I was really surprised to find out that Connecticut would pick a non-native introduced species as their state insect. There are two local school groups that are trying to change the state insect of Connecticut to either the spring azor butterfly or the autumn meadowhawk dragonfly, which makes more sense because they are native insects. I've mentioned the Chinese mantis in a few other videos and I've had a few people get very upset saying, oh gosh, they're so beautiful and I love them. And while they are beautiful, you have to consider the impact that they can do to our native animals. So I'm not making this video to get people all upset. I'm just trying to let you know the facts. Thanks for watching everybody. Peace, love, and joy. Always be humble. Always be kind. See you next time. Time.